Hello everyone and welcome to this Microsoft Azure and Microsoft Fabric video. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through on how to implement data integration directly from Azure Data Lake Storage and Tool to Microsoft Fabric Lake House by leveraging the Azure Data Factory. Interestingly, this is going to be my first video after receiving the prestigious Microsoft MVP award for the fifth consecutive year and officially being recognized as Microsoft Fabric MVP, including my traditional Excel. So I'm super excited and I will welcome to this video. So if you're new to this channel, please make sure you click on the subscribe button and turn the bell icon to be notified on new videos. So let's get into this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create what's called service principal and specify rule assignment in my portal.azure.com. The service principal is an application identity that allows tokens to be used to authenticate and access specific Azure resources. Now, to do that, I'm going to come here and search for Microsoft Entra ID. Now, the Entra ID is previously known as Azure Active Directory. So, I'm going to click on this Entra ID and I'm going to see that. Click on the Microsoft Entra ID. I want to come to the app registrations. Click on that and I want to click on new registration. I'm going to give this a minute for name. I'm going to call this one Abiola David App Registration. Okay, and then I can provide the supported account. Now I'm going to stick with this account in this organization directory only that is Cornerstone IT Single Tenant. And then at the bottom left, click on register. So this is going to be created. And I'm going to see under the overview the essential information such as the display name, the application ID, object ID, and so on and so forth. I'm going to come to certificates and secrets, click on that, and then click on new client secrets. So I'm going to provide a name or description for my secret. I'm going to call this one Abiola Secrets, and then I can specify the expiring date. I'm going to stick with this 180 date, that is six months. Go ahead and click on add, and that's done automatically. And then we're going to see what's called the service principal secret key. Now, for demonstration, I'm going to actually expose this but at the end of this video i'm going to actually delete this app registration and then delete the service principal so i'm going to open a new notepad and call this on secret id control v to paste that and then i also need the service principal id now to do that i'm going to come to the overview and then i'm going to see the application client id this is exactly what's called service principal id it can be confusing, but that's it anyway. So I'm going to call this one service principal ID and control V, brilliant. Now, we need to provide some level of assi role assignments to the newly created service principal. I'm going to come back to the roles and administrators, click on that. And then I'm going to click on the cloud application administrator, click on that. And then I can click on add assignment and I'm going to attach this to one of my users. I'm going to attach that to Abiola at Cornerstone IT Solutions 918 and so on. Click on this and it's going to be selected. Go ahead and click on add and then we're going to see that within the scope of this current resource. Brilliant. Now we want to go to app.powerbear.com to create Microsoft Fabric Workspace and Lake House that's going to actually hold our data coming from the Azure Data Lake Storage into via the Azure Data Factory. I'm going to come here and then I'm going to click on the Data Factory and then click on the Workspaces, click on the new Workspace. I'm going to call this one Azure Data Sets. And then I can click on Apply. So I'm going to have the Workspace created. And of course, we need to create the Microsoft Lake House. So Fabric Lake House. I'm going to click on this nail and then click on the Lake House. I'm going to call this one data from ADF. And then this is a new functionality. We can actually create a schema similar to the warehouse. But I'm going to click on create and then we'll have the new data from ADF Lake House created. There we go. So this has been sorted. Now, before we go ahead, it is important we enable the service principal to use the Fabric APIs. Otherwise, it's not actually not going to work. Now, to do that, I'm going to come to this Get Icons under the Governance and Insight. I'm going to click on Admin Portal. And in Admin Portal, I'm going to come to this Search menu and I'm going to search for Service Principal. And then it is important we enable the Service Principal can use Fabric IPs. 
click on enable enabled and then click on apply so within three minutes or thereabouts this should be up and running i'm going to go to my azure data set workspace and it is important to come to the manage access now this was called a role based access control now I need to give the permission to the newly created service principal. So click on this add people or groups. And I'm going to set for the name for my service principal. So this is Abiola David App Bridge. So I'm going to come here and set for Abiola. And I'm going to say that Abiola David App Registration there. Now, this actually made possible because we enable the service principal can use the fabric APIs. Otherwise, this is not actually not going to work. So click on this just to demonstrate. Click on the add. So this has been added. Now, we want to go ahead in the Microsoft Azure to create our Azure data factory. I'm going to come back here and then go to the home. And then I can come. Oh, basically, just come to this um, resource group and then I can create a new Azure Data Factory. So in the resource group, click on the create and then it's going to take me to the marketplace. I'm going to search for Azure Data Factory and then click on search. Okay, so we have the Azure Data Factory. Click on that and then we can create a new data factory. So click on create and then we're going to provide our subscription and then the resource group. Now, automatically, it's actually going to pick up my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription and it's going to be stored in my resource group, the ABF. I can create a new one, but this is fine. And I'm going to provide a meaningful name. I'm going to call this one maybe um, David Demo ADF. And then this should be available and I can specify the region and the version. So all these are fine. Click on review plus create. And then we can click on create. So this is going to initialize the deployment and then submit the deployment. And then within two minutes or less, our Azure Data Factory should be ready. Okay, there we go. Deployment succeeded. And then we can see deployment succeeded. We can see the deployment name, the subscription, the resource group. Now we can go to resource. So when I click on that, I can go ahead and see that I've got the David Demo ADF Data Factory service created which is cool so we can see the overview we can see the activity log and so on and so forth i'm going to go ahead and launch the azure data factory studio click on this launch studio i'm going to actually show you my azure data lake storage Gen 2 container and a directory and a file inside the directory so i'm going to come here and then i can go on and then i can click on the adls gen 2 so when i click on i'm going to see that i've got what's called the data lake the hierarchical namespace enabled now this is actually going to give us the azure data lake storage gen 2 and then under the data storage i'm going to click on the containers and then i've got all these three containers i'm going to click on the sales container and then i'm going to see two directory files the sales and synapse now in the sales i've got a sales csv file for the 2020 so let's click on that let's see the preview now i'm going to click on this edit at the bottom i'm going to click on the preview and then we can see the five columns year product unit price and the sales columns which is cool so our goal is to take this data using the azure data factory and ingest into the newly created lake house in the microsoft fabric so i want to come back here and then first I'm going to click on the manage and then we need to create what's called the link service to the source, the Azure Data Link Storage tool. So go ahead and click on mail and then I'm going to actually browse or search for the Azure Data Link Storage tool. Click on that and then click on continue. So I'm going to stick with this Azure Data Link Storage tool default name or storage and then I can provide the connect via the integration runtime. This is going to be the auto resolve integration runtime. And then I can provide the authentication type. This is going to be account key. And then for my account selection method, this is going to be from my Azure subscription. I'm going to choose my subscription, the Visual Studio Enterprise and scroll down. And then I can point to the storage account. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to see the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 Abiola. Click on that. And then I can go ahead and test the connection to my source, the ADLS Gen 2. Click on test connection. This should be successful. Brilliant. Click on create. So we have the link service to the source data. Now, we also need to create linked service to the destination, the sync, that is the Microsoft Lake House. So go ahead and click on this new. 
and then I can search for Lake House. And of course, this is super cool. I can see the Microsoft Fabric Lake House. That, now, this is actually perhaps the very first video on how we can perform this direct ingestion of data from the Azure Data Lake Storage tool to the Microsoft Fabric Lake House via the Azure Data Factory. So go ahead and click on Continue. And I'm going to stick with this name. I'm going to delete that. And then I can scroll down. So my tenant is actually detected automatically. I'm going to come to the Fabric Workspace name. Uh, I'm going to choose the Azure Dataset Workspace. And then I'm going to click and select the data from ADF Lake House name. And I'm going to scroll down. I can see my tenant ID detected automatically. Now, I need the service principal ID. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to copy this service principal ID, control C, that is the client ID, and control V, and then we need the service principal secret key. Now for the secret key, I'm going to come here and then copy all of these, and then control C, and when I come back here, I'm going to control V to paste. Now I can go ahead and test the connection to the destination of the linked service. Click on test connection and let's see what's going to give us amazing so we have a successful connection to the microsoft fabric lake house super cool now i can go ahead and click on create and then i'm gonna have the linked service to the source and then the sync the destination cool now i'm gonna come back here and come to the auto now in the auto we can go ahead and create our copy data activity pipeline so click on this ellipsis and i want to create a new pipeline now for the pipeline i'm going to call this one data integration and then press enter okay so i can close these properties for now and then under the activities i'm going to search for the copy data activity and drag across to this canvas and then i can close this for now and then i can provide under the general tab a name for my copy data activity i'm going to call this one data transfer you can use any name you like and then we can go to the source now for the source we need to create source data sets so i'm going to click on this new and then go ahead and search for azure data lake storage and tool click on the continue now don't forget our source data is actually a comma separated value that's text delimited i'm going to come back and choose the delimited text and then click on continue and then i'm going to stick with this name and then i'm going to choose the linked sub that we created for the azure data lake storage and so the azure data lake storage and then i can browse through the container and then the directory and then the sales 2020 so click on this browse and then i can go on to the sales container and then i can double click on the sales directory and then i can see the file click on that click on okay so we're going to see the container the directory and then the name of the file super cool so we're going to stick with this first row as header and i want to import the connection store that is from the import schema go ahead and click on okay so we are able to successfully create the data set to the source now for the sync the destination click on this nail and then i'm going to search for the lake house now interestingly we're going to see the microsoft fabric lake house files and table now if we want to land the data as a delta table so in the tables we're going to choose the table but if we actually land as a file on under this then we can choose the lake house files so our goal is to land as a delta table so click on this and then click on continue i'm going to stick with this lake house one and then provide the same linked service we created click on the lake house and then i can provide the table name unfortunately we don't have any table name so we're going to actually create a table name manually so enter manually i'm going to call this one sales data and then I'm going to stick with this or just choose now for the import schema and then click on OK. So we have a table. We can actually click on validate to check if there's any error. So your pipeline has been validated. No errors were found, which is good for us. Close for now. And then I can click on the debug to run or to perform the data movement from the Azure Data Lake Storage and Tool to my lake house delta table so the job has been key we have the activity name we have the data transfer and then we have the activity status queued and then we have the tag copy data so let me just collapse this for now and i can click on the refresh click on the refresh 
So this should be succeed successful in a moment. Let's see. We can refresh. Okay, succeeded, which is absolutely amazing. Now I can click on this output. I can even click on this data transfer. I'm going to see the diagram view of what is going on. So we have the source. So we have the Azure Data Lake Storage and Tool, and then we have the succeeded, and then we are writing to Microsoft Fabric Lake as, and you can see data written, files, one file, rows written, and so on and so forth. At the bottom, we can see we have the queued, successful, and so many other details, including the throughput, the copy duration, 37 um, seconds, and so on. Super cool. Now I'm going to come here and then this is the moment of truth. I'm going to right click and then click on refresh. So there we go. We have the sales, which is super cool. I'm going to quickly switch to the SQL analytics endpoint. Click on this lake houses and then click on the SQL analytics endpoint. So we can go ahead and query the data. We just want to count how many rows we got in that sales table. So I can click on this new SQL query and I'm going to use the simple select and I want to use the count functions. I want to count all the rows from the um, sales. So we can even see we have the schema, which is the default database owner created automatically. So we can see the table and of course we can see things like the view, stored, function, stored procedures and so on. This is basically like the normal way out of the thing. So let's go ahead and select and run this code. And let's say we've got 34 rows. So when you come back here, you can see we have the same number of 34 rows written. So this is how we can use the Azure Data Factory to perform data orchestration from the Azure Data Lake Storage tool to the Microsoft Fabric Delta table. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, share with your friends, comment, and follow me for more data engineering videos because the best is yet to come. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.